Leslie gave a great introduction to what we're going to be talking about today. We've been talking a lot about data and feedback loops. And it can be really challenging to build them effectively so that people actually use them. Uh, I am M. Jackson Wilkinson, uh, as Leslie mentioned, um, founder and CEO of WeSprout, which is one of the uh, original Rock Health companies, and previously worked at Posturus, LinkedIn, and Figit Labs back in DC, where I've worked on lots of consumer-oriented products. So I, I've been on the consumer web for a long time, and only just recently, the last six months or so, have been coming into healthcare. And if you're wondering what the M stands for, we share the same name. It's awkward. Um, so we have to get off of his face. So I'll put a more pleasant one up. This is my fiance, Carol, who is the coolest person that I know. Super smart, super bright, really friendly. Uh, she's, a, she's a pediatric resident at UCSF. And when she brings work home in the evenings, and she's using the software that she has to use as a doctor, as a pediatrician, which you know, hospitals have spent millions, tens of millions of dollars on, she turns into something more like this, and she becomes really, really scary. Uh, she gets angry, frustrated. I just have to get that off the screen, because it's going to frighten me. Um, but she, she basically has so much trouble using the software, despite the fact that she is patient, smart, young and gets these computer things. It's, it, it's, not, it's one of those things that other speakers this morning have been talking about. We can't blame the user anymore. We have to blame the, blame the folks who design the software that puts people into these situations. And so we've learned that on the consumer web. We've learned that you don't fight against non-technical users. They are not the enemy. You are if you're not able to, to help them accomplish their goals and, and with them accomplish goals. And in healthcare, this is definitely changing. But it's only changing at the edges right now. It's changing with you know, folks like Aza working on Massive and, and various other products like that that are really just starting to impact the field. But far and away, every EHR that I've had the pleasure to have seen so far has massive, um, not just usability issues, but just data entry issues. And I think, I think that that's because the healthcare industry doesn't really get one big thing, and the healthcare software industry doesn't really get one big thing, and that's that doctors, nurses, other healthcare professionals are no more technical than the stereotypical mom, right? They may be very sophisticated, they may have lots of deep domain knowledge, they may have very specialized needs, but they're not technical users. On the consumer web, we, we design software for developers differently than we would for consumers, though even our version control systems for software are well designed at this point. And in healthcare, where you really need top quality software so that people can do a great job most, it's falling up the most short. Data, as we've been talking about yesterday and today, is an incredibly important part of everything in the healthcare world. But input design, these forms, these feedback loops, these mechanisms for getting data into the system is really blocking the, our ability to create progress and move forward. It's creating issues, causing mistakes, and really it's increasing costs, which is one of the biggest problems. For any product, whether it's consumer, whether it's healthcare, whether it's finance, for any user, data entry needs to be accurate, it needs to be fast, and it needs to be simple. So I'm going to offer one guiding principle and a few other supporting ones to, to, to help guide the design of these kinds of systems. The best form is the one you never have to fill out. And we've been learning that a lot the last few years. Sensors are you know, sort of all the rage. We heard a lot about them yesterday in various uh, shapes and forms. And you know, if you think of something that you know, everybody probably knows about here, Fitbit, now they collect three basic things. There's the, the activity element, there's the weight element, and there's the food element. And two of those they now collect via sensors. And you never have to actually use a form to make those happen. And so as a result, you know, those are the order in which people are most successful at filling out uh, their information. Smarts. Uh, yesterday, if you were here for developer day, uh, the CTO at ZocDoc was talking about how uh, they don't want to rely on office reception. And ZocDoc allows you to book appointments for, uh, for doctors online, last minute appointments, very easy, uh, et cetera. And what they don't want to do is rely on office receptionists to say, oh, uh, you know, Dr. Smith has 
a day off on Monday so we can't accept appointments. That they just find that that's not reliable. So what they've actually been doing is looking at the information that they have had and, and the appointments that have been set up and they'll say, well, no appointments have been booked so far for Monday, but there are tons of appointments on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Maybe Dr. Smith actually has a day off that day. Maybe we shouldn't book some stuff. And they can, they can then follow up and take the initiative of collecting that data rather than just hoping that they're going to, they're going to find out. And that creates a much better uh, opportunity for them to, to make sure that they don't book appointments that aren't going to be able to be fulfilled. And then passive collection is, is another way of going about doing this. You don't necessarily need a form to get every bit of information. So on, on WeSprout, which is a parent-to-parent Q&A network that's backed by a personal health record to make the community all that much smarter, if you were to, this is a little washed out, but you can see the UI. If you were to ask a question to the community about you know, your daughter's pink eye and when you should send her back to daycare, if we don't know that your daughter, if your daughter's PHR doesn't say, you know, Susie has pink eye, we can then prompt, because we recognize that that's a condition, we can bring that in and with one click you can have logged that that, that happens. So this is sort of a passive way of going about doing it rather than requiring somebody to kind of do their taxes every month and fill in all this information. But sometimes, and, and frankly most of the time, forms are inevitable. They're something that you, you need to, some, to one extent or another, uh, especially in really complicated systems like healthcare. So, one guideline is whatever you request, any info that you request from a user, try to return that favor in spades. Show what the value proposition of filling out that form is. Show that there's an end of the tunnel, and then try to do something more with the data than, than the entry of the data itself actually took. So whether it's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're a pediatric resident, for instance, just because, you know, I spend a lot of time with one, they have to achieve, they have to do certain procedures and they have to do a certain number of them over a certain period of time. But they track all, all of those separately from when they enter these into their EMR. And as a result, it's this painful system that everybody gets annoyed with. And I, at, at, least, at least once every two weeks, one of the residents at UCSF asked me if I can build a system so that they can track these more easily. And they're already tracking that stuff. So. Uh, but but the, the system is not returning the favor. It's not helping them through all the other things that they need to do uh, as a result. So that can be terribly annoying. Don't ask for anything you don't need. And this can be really hard. It's really easy to just make a form with every possible option. Uh, but that creates a lot of cognitive load. Big forms mean that you're going to pause before, before saying, do I really have time to fill this out, even if you only have to fill out two fields? And as a result, it, it results in abandonment, it results in mistakes. If you do need a lot of information, then break it up into manageable portions so that you know, a, a user, a doctor, a, a nurse, a patient isn't confronted with you know, 25 fields to fill out where they feel like this is, kind of, this is tax season. For simple data, consider the non-form. I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, Sean and Will, our, our buddies at Chronology, uh, in tracking the personal efficacy of uh, IBD treatments, they ask you a simple question. Uh, they say, they ask how you're feeling, and you just kind of drag it along a slider, and that's all you have to do. It's simple and straightforward, and then what they do with it is they're able to then chart that out, show how you've uh, been feeling from time to time, and then align those with the treatments that you've been going through. So you can start to see very simply correlations between the treatment that, uh, that you've been using, whether it's medical or herbal or, or anything like that, and how it's having a real impact on your life across the board. It's incredibly simple to do. You can do it, I think, via phone and a couple other mechanisms. But it's not this big form that people need to use. You just drag a quick slider, and you, you barely even have to think about it, and it does the work for you. On WeSprout, we help you track developmental milestones, and while you can do that in a lot of different ways, uh, we simply want you to just kind of check them off. And we keep track of the day you checked it off, we keep track of the category that's in, how long, uh, how old the child was when that happened. So we just give you a list, and if you notice that that's happened, it's, it's one click to check it off. It doesn't feel like data entry in the same way that filling out long forms does. Next, try to fit into your uh, user's existing workflow. So uh, one really good example of this in healthcare is uh, the improving nature of audio transcription services, right? So 
Uh, some EMRs are allowing doctors to dictate their notes into the system and it'll just handle it that way, which, can be, which is something they're already used to doing. They'll pick up the phone and call a dictation service. Uh, in this case, they can just hit a button so it actually improves their workflow while still fitting into the same place that it otherwise would. And when you think about things like mobile, uh, don't think about mobile as something, a box that you have to check because not, every, not everything needs to be mobile focused, but when you are designing a product that has needs outside of the, the hospital or outside of the home or when you're not around a computer, then think of mobile as a way of fitting into someone else's workflow and how can you design an experience and how can you design forms that take advantage of that context. In conversation, it's really rude to do, but on forms, it's great to finish your user sentences for them. Uh, we all run into this all the time, autocomplete, autocorrect, you know, who knows how to spell the names of medications. If, if they type in a brand name, you can complete that with the generic name. Uh, if you know the dosages that are, that are in play, then you can, you can take care of those issues. But really jumping in and saying, all right, all right, I get it. No need to actually go and fill out all this stuff. That can be a really great way of eliminating mistakes and making it easier for folks to use, and in fact, getting them to, to use it more. And along with that, I just sort of mentioned it, is uh, when there are many options, rather than having folks type in a value, avoid that sort of paradox of choice and, and give them a short list of options that you think that might be, uh, might be the right answer. So if, in our case, a parent says, my child is taking uh, you know, acetaminophen and codeine, then there are certain, certain different types of dosages, and depending on the age, certain of them are more likely to be relevant. And we, just, we can just track that simply by seeing what other folks have done in the past and prioritizing them that way, rather than having everybody say it's in tablet form and it was 200 milligrams of this and it was 50 milligrams of that and I have to take it you know, X number of times. So uh, if you're able to take those steps on behalf of your user, that can be a really compelling way as well. And at all times, give users every possible resource to complete the entry. Don't hide anything uh, that, you, that might be relevant to the, to the user, to the person who's filling out the form. And uh, one of the EMRs that, that Carol actually has to use at one of the hospitals here in San Francisco, um, when she's writing her notes and her orders, it doesn't say the name of the patient anywhere on the screen. So when a nurse comes along or somebody else comes and there, there's an interruption, she steps away for a moment, she goes back. It's not clear what she was in the middle of doing. And you know, her, her group makes many mistakes every week prescribing the wrong medications to uh, patients simply because they don't see the name of the patient on the screen as they're writing the orders and they'll mix something up. And fortunately, in an area like this, you have pharmacists and nurses who are uh, on the ball enough to catch many of those errors, but certainly a number of those get get let through, and there are simple solutions to these problems. And even though it may take a little bit of extra work, try to accept any reasonable input without whining. We've probably all gotten error messages like this where you'll type in a phone number and you use dashes, but it wants dots or it wants parentheses or something like that. Um, if you're accepting something, you know, phone number is a simple example, but you know, if it's 10 digits you can, and it's in the US, you can probably figure it out. Uh, if it's seven digits and you're a local organization, you can probably figure it out. Same is true with dates, you know, whether somebody's using dashes or slashes, uh, you know, either provide them a calendar to click on so that there's no ambiguity, or accept a couple of different formats so that you don't throw them back in error, which just makes them roll their eyes and toss their head back and say, you know, this, this is really annoying. Location is one that you can start to do now, rather than having to, to fill out street address one, street address two, city, state, zip, country, et cetera, let them throw the address in whatever format they want and use something like Google Maps or Yahoo Maps to disambiguate that, get the address back, and then you can, you can pull it in in a more effective way so that that can be a really easy way and a really compelling way, especially you know, if you're shipping something, that you, then you might want to validate it against something else or, or double check it with the user. But if, you're, you know, kind of a, uh, if you don't need real heavy exactitude in that regard, then you know, let the user throw in whatever they want and take what, take what you get, and it'll just be a more pleasant experience for everyone. And so just kind of wrapping up, there are no dumb questions, but don't ask any dumb questions. 
uh, you know, it, it's, these are big systems that, that healthcare is working within. At, at least there are small elements to them. But as we get more and more interconnected among systems, when you can take advantage of, uh, of, of what one part of your system is collecting, when, when collecting data for another bit of the system, then that can be, that can be fantastic. If, you're, if you already know when appointments were scheduled, then take advantage of that next time you're asking for information about the time and date. Pre-fill that information. Um, make sure that the left hand knows what the right hand is doing on your product. And in that way, you know, the user comes away thinking, all right, this product has it together. I enjoy using it. It's quick. It's efficient. I don't have to enter anything that they should have taken care of for me. So really, when, when you, when, from the software that I've seen in healthcare, this is the low-hanging fruit. Uh, the vast majority of the software that, that I've seen so far that's in sort of the traditional healthcare space is, is designed terribly and works against itself in, in terms of getting users, nurses, doctors, and patients to, uh, to, to input data correctly, not make mistakes, and, and really work on behalf of their own health and well-being. And, and as folks who are in this room, we care enough to get these things right. Uh, so as, as you think about opportunities in healthcare, you know, take a look around at what, it, what already exists and the bar compared to the consumer web and what we need to do to get every user in the country to be able to use a given product, even some pretty complex ones, the bar is pretty low. So uh, you know, do, do take advantage of that. We can really make a difference on these fronts in terms of, of data entry and that can lead to uh, eliminating problems, eliminating costs, and really making all of us healthier, happier, better. So, thanks so much. Eat. Uh, feedback can go here. Thanks so much. <laughs>